Hey guys, so this is Coach Bowen, and I'm here today to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, footwear for track. So uh, I've got a lot of people asking me what shoes do we need to have, okay? And so uh, there's two things that we all need. Firstly, uh, everybody needs just a general pair of athletic shoes as far as what brand you use. Um, that's going to be a little bit different for everybody depending on uh, what, your, what your specific needs and requirements are. Uh, if you're a distance runner, you need something that's going to be a little uh, a little bit more durable because you're going to put more miles on the shoe compared to like a shot putter or, or sprinter or jumper. Um, as far as the brands for that go, guys, it doesn't really matter. Um, there are quite a few different brands that are available. Uh, Nike, New Balance, Under Armour, Hoka, um, On Cues. They all make really good shoes. Uh, Asics, Mizunos. Uh, the biggest thing we're looking for with those shoes is that you try them on uh, before you buy those. Try not to buy those off the internet if possible, um, because one of the things we notice with track is um, you're going to run on these shoes a lot more than than most people are going to use a normal shoe, okay? And so if you typically roll your foot outwards or you roll your foot inwards when you walk, if you have a shoe that mismatches that, um, it's going to mess up your gait and cause some 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 additional wear and tear in your body that's not really necessary so um i would suggest you you actually look at a pair of shoes that helps uh that matches really really well um additionally you want to look for things in the shoe um like that they are not necessarily you, you don't want to look for a trainer typically okay and i want to show you a website here really quickly um i'm going to share my my screen with you and so um, there are a lot of different websites we can use. Okay. So one of the ones I like to go to, um, we have locally, I'm just going to go to Academy Sports. Okay. We have, we have that really close by. It's in Cookville. Um, and so when I go to footwear on Academy, if I'm going to go shop at footwear, there's some things I want to look for. Okay. So. When I go look at, and this is just like for, for me, for example, uh, when I look at shoes, um, I would go to like, I'd look at their obviously athletic and, and sneaker shoes uh, just for the sake of training. Um, but there's a difference in a training shoe and a running shoe. They're not the same thing. Not at all. Okay. If you look at a training shoe and this is, uh, this is a general statement. Okay. This isn't always true. Training shoes, these are more meant to be a universal style athletic shoe. And you'll notice on the front, the fronts are usually fairly small. Okay. And the shoes are going to be heavier. What we see a lot of times, if you run a lot in a training shoe, the front half of the foot under the ball of foot, the actual foam that the shoe's made out of will collapse very quickly. Um, and that causes a lot of injuries to the runner. So what we actually look for is a running shoe. Okay. And right now there's a lot of deals. Nike and a lot of the others are turning over their shoes. Um, so you can might be able to find some on Academy and at Academy and Cookville, really you can get a really good deal on. Uh, if you notice the ASICs right there, just look at the image of it. Um, notice how the front is a lot more built up. Uh, compared to what we saw on the trainer shoe there. So that is a significant difference. These are going to hold up uh, to your mileage, okay, much, much, much more so um, than a than a standard shoe was. And actually, that's a crazy deal. They've got those for $25 in a bunch of sizes. So uh, I know I've ordered stuff from them before, and you can get it picked up and check, and check it out at Cookville too. Um, but if you notice a lot of the running shoes are, they're a little different. Uh, they're made to have more support on the front. Uh, they're also meant to have a little bit different arch support from brand to brand, depending on what they are. So, um, I would just really consider that. Um, now Nike does, is pretty liberal in what they consider a running shoe. Like none of the air maxes are, those are not running shoes. You see how like large that bottom sole is, that shoe's going to weigh a ton. Um, that has a really small front sole. So you want to avoid that. You want to look for a much more balanced shoe bottom, okay? So like the Brooks Ghost, a lot thicker on the bottom. Um, the Under Armour Charged are pretty good shoes too. I've seen a lot of good things out of them. Um, so that's something we need to kind of consider. 
That looks like a fairly decent, just off looks, looks like a fairly decent running shoe. The Robav is a very good running shoe. Um, so just kind of think about, those are things to kind of think about um, as you go purchase your, your practice shoes. But I would avoid things like this. They have those giant air pockets in the back. And you know how that's a, a really flat shoe from front? You can see that the heel is just a flat heel, which it's just not very conducive to running. It's going to be really heavy and really awkward. Okay. So that's, that's some basics about general training. Now, as far as um, actual running shoes for track, our actual competitive shoes. So I've got some examples here, okay? Now, track shoes are different than anything else, okay? Track shoes have actual metal spikes on the bottom of them. Now, first thing I can tell you about these spikes already, I can tell you this spike. Um, so these actually, there's two things you've got to kind of combat with. You talk about a pair of, um, these are generically as a shoe called a spike, okay? Running spikes, that means shoes with spikes in them. But inside the running shoes with spikes are already the spikes themselves. These are replaceable. And please do not buy any additional spikes. I will buy them, I buy them by the hundreds and I can just give them to them in practice. Additionally, the ones they carry locally at, um, oh shoot, our shoe store in town, I can't remember what it's called. Um, the Dunham's, they carry the wrong ones. We're only allowed to use them that are pyramid shaped, and these are pyramid shaped, but they can only be a quarter inch long. And I can tell you right now, these are three eighths, um, and these are illegal. If they catch you with these, they'll disqualify you from the race. So um, don't really do, don't really use those. Now, uh, to build on that, um, this is a Nike shoe. This is a little bit older Nike shoe, um, but Nike has used the same branding for their base, their their base shoes for forever. Okay, so on the Nikes usually on the tongue or on the inside, they'll tell you what the actual model is. So see, this one is a Nike. That's an XC. I know it's backwards, but XC. So this is a cross-country shoe. This is good for people who are on the one mile, the two mile, or cross-country. Um, you can kind of see right there from an angle, that is a carbon fiber plate in that shoe, meant uh, to be able to help them run a little bit quicker. Uh, it has fewer spikes in it because it's meant uh, you, you're not sprinting. OK, but these weigh nothing. These weigh about a third of what a standard tennis shoe is. So when you think about that, when they're running 180 steps per minute and they're running two minute laps. If this shoe gets them 10 steps a lap faster, that means at the end of a 12 minute race, 10, that's 120 steps. That's that can be close to a minute of race time. They shave off just by switching shoes. Um, so this is an example of one. That this weighs a few ounces. Um, cross country spikes are perfectly acceptable um, for that. Um, continuing with the Nike trend, okay, this is the Nike Zoom Rival S. So the Nike baseline sprint shoes are marked with an S, Zoom Rival, and then they'll have either an S or an M, okay, or a D for their track shoes. Now, you notice the bottom of this shoe, shape wise, that thing has a huge pattern in it there's a plate actually it's covered but inside the shoe shoe's very very stiff it doesn't weigh much it's got more spikes this one has seven rather than the cross country one which had only five in it and if you actually look at the shoe on the ground the heel is way off the ground because a sprinter's heel never touches the ground this is made to do that these are great overall basic sprint spike for anybody that runs the 100 to the 200 um you can jump in them a little bit they have some issues with jumping okay jumpers typically will hit their heels and there is zero absorption on this heel. So these are very, very tough shoes. Um, so if you know you're jumping, um, these can be a little harder to jump. The Nikes are a little harder to sprint and jump with uh, just because of their general construction. Uh, switching over to New Balance. New Balance made some really, really cool shoes a few years ago. This is a woman's sprinting spike. You notice what the curve, you notice this is a sprint spike. It's got a huge plate offset. This is incredibly stiff shoe. You can barely even bend it. Weighs about three ounces, I think. Um, this is one of the ones you can tighten by twisting. Um, you'll notice this is a short sprint spike because this is like a 100-meter shoe. Not even great for the 200 meters because it's really, really rigid. But this is a great spike. These were some of Lauren Randall's spikes back in the day. She just left them in the office. Okay. So this is Nike. This is a Nike Zoom Rival D. So Zoom Rival, once again, and this is a distance shoe. So it'll look like that typically on a tag. Now you notice the profile on this shoe is much, much, much flatter compared to this, okay? So 
profile there versus profile there. Much flatter. These also have a heel in them. They have a cushioned heel. So if you are hurdling, sprint spikes are bad because your feet, your heels are going to hit the ground, period. And you're going to take a lot of abuse in your knees and your ankles and your hips. Whereas these shoes still give you the spikes, which gives you the grip. You know, Tennessee, it rains a lot too. So the spikes are important to have as far as actual racing. And you can use the same set of spikes for four years. You don't, we don't use them that frequently. But having a little bit of a heel uh, on the spike is an advantage when hurdling because it just gives you a little bit more absorption because it's easier on you. Um, here's another Zoom Rival D, another distance. It even says distance on this model. Um, they're just so much flatter. They're way more flexy. Okay. Um, usually five or six pins on the bottom. So that gives you some examples there. Now, from non Nike examples, um, there's some other things here. So this is a Brooks. Um, sorry, this is, yeah, this is, sorry, this is a Ciccone. This is their distance shoe. So notice in common, also very flat, not as big of a, of an arch. Um, this one's even lighter than the Nike. This way is virtually nothing. Um, just those are some things to kind of think about as far as brands for sprint spikes go. Um, I'm not a huge, like one brand or the other fan. This is, so this is a really good example. This is a um, of another Ciccone. That's this is a sprint spike. You can tell by the offset from the front to the back. You notice the big. There's a big hip. Okay, but what the Ciccone does that I really like, and I like this more for high school kids, and I like the Nike ones. Um, they have a heel. They have a little bit of a cushion heel. Okay, it's a lot easier on their bodies than what the Nike shoe is, which is just it's the Nike sprint shoe. Um, if you look at them side by side, look at the amount of padding difference. In theory, the Nike should be slightly faster. Because, you know, it's it's got less cushioning. But in reality, our younger runners, especially young high school runners, are going to struggle to stay off their heels. And so their, their knees, their ankles are going to take more abuse from this shoe than they ever would one with a little bit of a heel. Okay. So those are some things to look at. Now, throwers, we're different. We're the people who think vegetables go on hamburgers, not necessarily as a meal on its own. So notice at the bottom of a throwing shoe. They're completely slick, okay? These are really, really important. I've had the same pair of throwing shoes my first four years of college. They last virtually forever. So they're really easy to invest in a pair of throwing shoes. And as long as you take care of them, they'll last you five, six years, as much as we're going to throw. Throwing shoes, you'll notice there's a circle right there, are meant to be able to turn on the balls of the feet. So when you actually put them on the ground, they're a style of rubber that doesn't grip um, nearly as much as a regular shoe does. So when we go throw in a concrete pad, when we rotate and spin in the throw, it's really important to have this ability to rotate and move. Um, there's all sorts of different brands for them as well. So I'm going to take you through a couple of places that I use to buy the throwing shoes uh, and the sprint shoes. Locally, our, our sourcing for those is not great. Okay. I'm um, just going to be, you know, I try to tell you all as much as I can. Um, so I'm going to go back to Academy because, once again, Academy is semi-local. You can go to Cookville and find, and check out Academy. Um, so when I go to Academy and I look at their, their shoes, for example, so sports, um, if they've got them, I don't even know if they even have them here. Uh, sometimes they do. Um, let's see if they got cracked. So they have some. Okay, they've got a few bits. So if we go to track shoes, track and field shoes, is to think how they list them. So this is what Academy has. Sometimes they have them locally. Sometimes they don't. Uh, if you want to check something local without totally buying it online, please do so. But when you look at this, I see the word Zoom Rival, and I always want to look after that. That's a sprint. So this is for short sprinters. It's another shoe for short sprinters. That's a shoe for short sprinters. Uh, a lot of these are going to be shoes for short sprinters. This is a cross-country or distance running shoe, that'd be good for that. There's some throwing shoes on there. Um, with throwing shoes, Nike makes a very is a very common one. The Zoom Rival SD2s, that is their beginning shoe. It's perfectly fine. Um, that is one I would highly recommend for people to start with, okay? Um, but these are some of our better options, and they have a lot right now. Typically, what track shoe models do is they turn over um, somewhere around February, because that's when everyone buys them. So you can usually get stuff cheaper uh, at this time of year. 
Okay. Now my throwers, you notice this shoe, the Zoom Rival SD2 looks a lot like this Zoom Rotational 6. Um, they look alike, but they function very different. This shoe is a slick bottom. This has a little bit of grip on it. So this is harder for new kids to throw in. I would actually recommend the cheaper shoe because it will work better for you. Okay. Um, so now if you are a jumper, this is a little different. I didn't have any jump shoes on, like on my person. Uh, jump shoes are a little different because the heel is going to hit the ground when you jump. So typically a jump shoe has a little bit different construction because it is made for the athlete's heel to hit the ground. So if you're going to be a long jumper a specialist, um, and that's your main event. Uh, those are worth investing in. You know, they, they look different. They have a little bit different construction. Uh, and these are fantastic. Those are great deals. That's a really, really good deal on that there. Um, if you're running that middle distance, I would suggest you just get a distance spike. Um, we don't have any javelin throws. So you don't have to worry about that. High jumpers, you notice, if you're a high jumper specialist, they do have a – these have a designated heel spike because those of you that have jumped before – um, you know, when your foot gets extended to jump, um, when your foot actually extends out to jump, that heel spike is extremely important because if you slip, uh, especially because we know it gets a little wet around here in the spring, uh, that's how we hurt ourselves. So high jump spikes are really, really, they're not a really a luxury. They're really a necessity um, for like safety reasons They help you a lot. Okay. So this is one place to get them. There's tons of other places to get those, you know, track shoes. Um, some other websites, if you want to order your spikes online, uh, that have really good deals. Let me show you a couple before I uh, uh, let y'all off here. So one of the ones I use a lot is a place called First to the Finish dot com. Okay. So First to the Finish dot com. This is an online only place. They have tons of stuff. Uh, you can search when you go to click when you go to footwear. Uh, you can select what you are. Like for example, if I go to throwing shoes, uh, it's going to show me all the throwing shoes. Now you can see Adidas already come out with their new model. Uh, when it comes to throwing shoes, these are available everywhere. These are my favorite, the Sacconi Unleash. These are my single favorite throwing shoe ever. I've had two pairs of them. Uh, they are wonderful. I find them the best all around shoe. Um, I have owned almost every different brand of throwing shoes there are. Um, the hyper throws are readily available. You can usually find those around $50 to $60. They're fine. They're a little flatter. They're not bad. I've not owned the Under Armour ones yet. The Adidas, Adi Zeros, uh, the really expensive ones aren't worth buying. Um, they're, not, they're not really all that. Okay. Um, Adidas does make another model, and they don't have any in stock here right now, called a Throw Star. They're about $65. I think that's what Poppy has, and they are wonderful. They are the best beginning throw shoe, um, probably in my opinion. I like them better than the Nike as far as for beginners, and they're a little bit better than these. This is what I showed you earlier that I have. Okay. Um, but you basically go through and look by event. So if you are a um, – if you say – I'm a middle distance spike. And if you're not sure what you're doing at all, if you're not, you just know you're going to run, I would gravitate toward the middle distance spikes because you can sprint in those just fine. They're stiffer. They're still light. They're going to have some offset. But if you end up running some distance stuff too, or that middle distance, that 400, that 800, these are great. And right now stuff is this dirt cheap on here. Okay. If you go to first to the finish, you want typically want to sort by uh, your size because that eliminates stuff. A lot of our girls are probably going to wear, um, Basically, the, like a, if you're running a uh, – was it size and a half? So if you put a six in there, um, that will show you the men's. Because typically more shoes are men's sized um, than women's sized, but they've got some really good ones. Now, New Balance is a, is a brand that I personally like for sprint spikes. They're my personal favorite. Uh, I like what they do with their spikes. I think they're a little better. Um, they number theirs by – they'll call it MD for middle distance. Um and that's, they call that an MD 500. So that's like a, that's for like a little bit long sprinters. That's great for a high school kid. This is a, this is a shoe I would highly advocate for high school kids to get like a new balance. MD 500 is wonderful. You can do about anything in them. Uh, women's right now, they've got a bunch of them. They look really nice. Uh, new balance is one of the most well-respected brands of track and field. They make uh, the best middle distance shoe in the world. It's what Sydney McLaughlin wears. 
Um, they've got tons of stuff on discount right now too. So if you hit this place up, you might be able to find some really, really good deals. Um, but that's how to use kind of first to the finish is, is really good for that too. Um, so that's one I really like. Uh, another one I've used before is uh, running warehouse. Um, I've used this one quite a bit. Um, you have to, It takes a little more effort. Uh, you have to go to the track and cross country shop um, in order to find what you need. And then you can find beginner spikes, sprint and hurdle spikes, distance spikes, throw spikes. Now, one of the things everybody wants to get the best. Okay. And I understand you want to get the best for your kid or you want to buy the best for yourself, but there is a huge difference in beginners and, a, and experienced track and field spikes. Like this is a $170 ASICs. Okay. And this is, so these, zoom max flies they are wonderful wonderful shoes but the, the more expensive shoes for track the stiffer they get okay so the center plate in the middle gets really really stiff there's not much give so if your athlete is not really conditioned uh meaning they've not been sprinting for several years these are actually going to be harder, way, way harder on their body than like a beginner spike. So I personally do not recommend uh, the more advanced sprinting spikes until they've been around a while. I've, I've had very few athletes um, that have run at the level where these will make a difference positively for them. New Balance says their SD100s in here. Um, that's their sprint spike. You notice that version, just, there's no heel on the sprint spike really much at all. Um Adidas makes a good shoe. Puma makes a good shoe. Most most of the brands you're going to find out there make a really good shoe. Um, that gives you an example of the heel on the, the 500 versus the heel uh, on the 100. Okay. So there are just some things to look at while you're, while you're here. Um, so running warehouse is another good one. Um, Dunham's typically carries the... Um, Dunham's typically will carry a sprint spike and it's usually the Nike SD. Okay. Um, not always, but they typically have those. You can get them in there. Um, and try them on locally, see what you like, see what you don't like. Yeah. They've, they've got some, it's got a mark on clearance right now. This is typically about the only track and field shoe they carry. Um, they carry one model and it's usually this, whatever the year's version, they're about $65, I think is standard retail for them. Yeah. $65. Um, so that's something to kind of look at if you wanted to, to, you know, get something locally, as far as trainers go, uh, guys, there's a lot of places to get your, we call them flats. Those are non-spike shoes. That's what you train in, um, your trainer shoe. Um, there's some great, sh you know, uh, if you've never been there, I would suggest you maybe try to slip into French's shoes and boots downtown. Um, they have a ton of good running shoes for training and Brooke, they carry Brooks and upstairs. If you've never been upstairs. They have a lot of like display models. You can get like really nice brick shoes for sometimes like 30 and $40 and they're brand new. They just been like out of the box displays. So I've bought several like really nice pairs, like I bought an $135 pair of like Brooks, I think they were ghosts or adrenaline 13 or something like that upstairs. And they were $30. Um, so I would suggest you check those out. You can try them on, walk around with them, see how they feel. If they don't feel like they match your step or whatever. Then, you know, that's a great local source. Uh, rack room shoes at, um, in Crossville. Um, that's in the mall. Uh, rack room does a fantastic job. They, they actually carry a lot of shoes. They carry New Balance. Uh, they carry Asics. They carry Brooks all in the store. Um, so when I think about um, when you actually go to their, uh, when they actually go to their shoe, um, their shoe selection, they've got great like general training shoes. Uh, I mean, they carry, you know, here's a set of you know, nice Brooks running shoes they carry uh, in store available the levitates for that is unreal um those are in stores you can try them um that's another nice local place because i don't know i'll try to shop in town if i can um those two definitely had them dunham's usually carry some running shoes as well um so if you have specific questions about them please feel free to reach reach out to me say hey will these work um if you can only get one pair say so I, I can't afford to get you know a pair of training shoes 
and a pair of sprint spikes. You're going to use your training shoes more than you're going to use your sprint spikes, especially for, for distance runners. Um, get a better pair of, of training shoes before you get uh, sprint spikes. Um, because that's where the mileage is going to get put. Okay. Um, it's one of those things that you can get by with not necessarily running in a sprint spike. Um, you're going to have some situations where it's, where it's counterproductive. If it's slippery, your sprint spikes are going to be necessary pretty much. But um, if you can only afford one of the two, get a good training shoe. Because if you're running a poor training shoe, when you practice in a poor training shoe, you're going to get injured and you're not going to need the spikes anyways. So um, that's kind of my spiel. I know a lot of people have been asking me questions about shoes. Once again, if you got questions about them, please ask. If you, hey, if you see something in a thrift store that you might be interested in, you know, text me, say, hey, will these work for my events? I'll be glad to answer you back as quickly as I can. Um, also, if you need some sprint spikes, guys, and you can't afford any, come see me. Um, I've got a crate full of them right now that you probably want to run through the washer. Um, but people just when they graduate, they just say, hey, some kid can have these that need some that, that needs to get some. So um, we can try to take care of you as best we can. And, uh, you know, I got some people that will help out, too, if we really need to get something like that for you. So. Um, I hope everybody uh, found this useful and um, I want to stop this share and I'm going to go ahead and upload this. So um, that's really it. I hope you all have a great day. If you have, once again, if you have any questions on shoes, this is just my, my understanding from my general experience in the last you know 15 years of track and field. So uh, if you got any more questions, please feel free and ask. Uh, feel, and obviously feel free to do your own research too. So uh, bless y'all. Have a great day. Thank you.